Hello, this is Mr. Ho here, and we are starting Chapter 17, The Special Senses. The five major senses of the human body includes these following. Number one, olfaction, which is cranial nerve one, allowing you to smell. Number two, gustation, which means taste, allowing you to differentiate different foods, different drinks that you um, digest. Number three, vision, is simply what you see. That's your eyesight. Number four, equilibrium. Now, be careful with this. Equilibrium is a little confusing to some people. It, it means balance and to understand your body's external sensations. But to be specific, number four really is the sense of touch. Again, number four is truly the sense of touch, what you're able to feel on your hands, your legs, your body overall is really number four. Number five is hearing. And hearing is basically responsible for sounds, um, audible tones, and being able to record anything that you hear from your tympanic membrane. Olfactory organs, to begin with, let's talk about the sense of smell. <clears throat> Olfactory organs allow you to have a differentiation of what different smells are coming into the mouth, into your nose. So the nose picks up a lot of different odors, specifically over a thousand different smells can register in the human brain. So the olfactory organs provide a sense of smell. They are located in the nasal cavity on either both sides of the nasal septum. And they are created of two layers, the olfactory epithelium, which is located underneath the roof of the um, um, cribriform plate, which we'll find out in a second, and the lamina propria. This picture shows and uh, illustrates the different parts of the, um, the olfactory section. This is a sagittal view, by the way. So you see a cut of the brain um, and the nasal septum. The olfactory epithelium is the tissue which is located inside the nasal mucosa. The olfactory nerve is cranial one, again, number one, and right next to it is a very important thing. If you look in the middle where the yellow uh, uh, soft tissue is, that is the olfactory bulb. The olfactory bulb is responsible for registering smell sensations. It is located underneath the frontal lobe of the brain and is pressed up against the inner skull um, to a plate a bone called the cribriform plate and that is a place of skeletal bone tissue which separates the brain from your nasal septum but look at the picture you can see that the actual olfactory bulb actually allows the sensation and the uh, nerves to go right through the bone and it's innervating or touching the inside of the mucosa when you smell the flower or the rose in this picture, smell goes through your nasals and it goes into the cavity of your nasal septum. And then the odor is registered by the olfactory bulb. The olfactory tract is basically the lineage of vessels connecting to the bulb, which takes it directly to, you guessed it, the central nervous system. There are over 1,000 types of smell receptors to be approximate. And your brain recognizes different patterns of smells. And um, that is the center of the olfactory center, which is known to be the limbic area. There is a condition where you have a lack of smell. The term anosmia. It is the absence of the sense of smell. Believe it or not, you can actually lose sense of smell. Um, it can be caused by trauma, such as a head injury. Maybe somebody was in a car accident and so forth. Anosmia is also caused mostly by colds or allergies produced in the excessive mucus. In other words, when you are sick, you have a stuffy nose and you have a runny nose, it's hard to smell anything when you have a cold or a flu. Polyps cause blockage as well. This is an allergy, which is something in the air, you know, uh, some people are allergic to grass, dander, cat uh, hair, all sorts of different allergic reactions can block your sense of smell. Uh, also, a third of your deficiency of zinc will lead to anosmia. 
When you don't have this mineral zinc, it does allow you to lose a sense of smell. And the greatest effect to cause anosmia really is not shown here. It is simply getting old. When people get old, like grandma and grandpa, they start to lose their sense of smell as well as the other senses, such as vision. This picture shows a posterior uh, drop view of the brain. If you look at the uh, yellow highlights and follow where the olfactory bulb is, the olfactory bulb is in the forebrain or in the bottom of the uh, frontal lobe. This part of the brain is where you have the sense of smell. Now, the olfactory bulb is the organ that allows the sense of smell. And directly beneath it is another sense area. Uh, you can see these two little horns right below it where the olfactory tract is. Look right below it and you'll see like a, an X looking organ. That is actually a cutaway section of the optic nerve which plugs into the back of your eyes which allows you to see things. The next sensation is gustation. This is the ability to, to basically taste foods. And let me tell you, there's nothing better than tasting food. Provides information about the foods and liquids we consume. You have taste receptors known as gustatory receptors. They are distributed on the tongue in portions of your pharynx and the larynx. Now keep in mind, most of your taste buds or taste sensors are on the large center of the tongue. But if you look at the last two uh, areas, the pharynx and the larynx, they also can taste different foods, but that's really far in the back by your tonsils. And they're clustered into taste buds. What is a taste bud? Uh, it's associated with epithelial projections or lingual papillae on the superior surface of the tongue. What does that mean in plain English or in easier terms? Taste buds are little raised follicles of um, skin on your tongue. Not really skin, but you know, epithelial projections. And if you ever take a picture of your tongue on your iPad and you zoom in, you can see hundreds of small little sections of your tongue. And that's your taste bud. Uh, two major types of taste buds are fungiform and circumvallate. Here's the difference. Fungiform are going to be found on the majority of your tongue. When you stick your tongue out completely, that is where 90% of taste will go. The other 10% will go under the circumvallate papillae, which is this V-shaped um, taste buds in the back, which is very close to your tonsils. And of course, your pharynx and your larynx gets a little taste. Taste buds account for 50 to 100 epithelial cells each. So they do have several cells making each little bud in there. Taste receptor cells are known as gustatory cells. Microvilli here, they travel through the pore and they're bathed in saliva. Saliva is basically the fluid in your mouth that produces underneath the tongue, near the ungula, which is the webbing between the tongue and your bottom of your mouth. There are different types of taste in your mouth. The tongue allows you to taste four major tastes, but I'm going to give you five. Number one, sweet. We're talking what about what? Candy, sugar, chocolate. Sour. We're talking tastes from, um, you know, lemons, um, sour patch candy. Salty. Some people like salt on their pretzels. Some people like salt on their popcorn. Bitter taste is something unique. It's something that's in between sour and salty. It's the least light flavor of any taste. And an example of that would be vinegar or perhaps a bit of horseradish. The fifth one I put in there is called glutamate, MSG. And it's really popular in Asian or Chinese restaurants. Glutamate, MSG, is found in saucy foods such as um, gravy, thick meals, um, the sauce that you make and, you know, certain stir-fry vegetables and meats in Chinese restaurants. MSG gives people headaches. Some people are not affected whatsoever. Some people are. The gustatory tastes are the pathways to the brain and the cerebral cortex travel through two cranial nerves. This is important. The facial nerve is not only important for the expression of your, your face making smiles and uh, different um, emotional gestures, but the ability to have two-thirds of the tongue 
actually taste the foods is responsible by the facial nerve. The second nerve is a glossopharyngeal. And you should remember, G stands for what? Gag. The gag reflex is what this glossopharyngeal nerve does. It is located on the posterior third of the tongue and the pharynx. And both of these nerves allow taste.